What is up guys, how are you? Alex here from Hoppo's once again with another video for you guys. So today's project, 57 hardtop. And uh, we're doing a lot to it actually. So we're doing, well, I guess I should list it off for you guys. So what we're gonna be doing on here, we're doing cutting the car, getting it ready for hydros, dropping in cylinders, cups, donuts, all that stuff. Um, doing front tire reinforcements, uh, A-arm bushing ball joint swap, and in the rear we're doing rear arches, uh, inside arches and outside arches, and we're also doing a full custom four link and setting it up uh, with a bridge or somewhat of a bridge. We haven't really figured that part out yet, but most likely I'm gonna lean towards a bridge for strength and uh, structural issues. Uh, and getting the back ready for hydro. So that's what we're working on. Uh, this car just came in this morning. Um, so what we have done so far is we got it up on the lift and pretty much just stripped it down and we got the body off. So you can see bodies off, frames down there somewhere. Um, so that's gonna be the next part. So we actually just cut, we actually just did the paper templates and I just did a full program for, uh, we're gonna be doing inside arches and outside arches for this vehicle. So I got them set up here. Uh, the outside arch, take you right over there real quick. So you can see we already pulled the frame off the body. Um, I'm keeping the, the bolts in there just to keep it lined up and keep it studded. That way it's easier for us to find our position when we're ready to drop it back in after. But we're doing our outside arch starting from right here on a factory position all the way to right around here. And the reason we're doing it to here is that way you're getting, you have access to get to your, uh, your welder in there. That way, you know, if we go all the way to the back, you're not going to be able to get your welder in there without tearing everything apart. So we're trying to make it a little easier for you guys, and we're bringing it to right about here somewhere. So you can see that arch section is a little over four feet, and it's about, uh, I believe it was like 51 inches. So we're doing a full outside arch, and then the inside arch will consist of a piece that's coming from right about here to about there somewhere. So that's what I just showed you guys on the table. We just did the, the program for it. Start off with our paper. As you can see, I haven't cleaned up my mess yet. And we're working our way to the arches. So next step, I already got my measurements, as you can see right here, for the rear end placement to keep the axle centered up in here. Our next step is pretty much just blow this thing apart. So we're gonna be cutting off all the brackets, rear bracket, front bracket, cleaning up this whole back side of the frame, cleaning up the front side of the frame, wire wheeling everything, getting it all clean, ready for uh, to weld on. And um, pretty much once we get the, out, the arches done, we're gonna get this, the body back on the frame and uh, we can keep rolling from there. And we're, this body's probably gonna be on and off probably two to three times. Uh, so we're just gonna keep it and we're gonna build right underneath it. That way it's easier for us. So there you guys go. I'll keep you guys updated as we go on. Uh, this one's probably going to take us a few days to go, so this video is going to kind of go through a few days worth of work. So I'll keep you guys updated. So guys, so far we've got the whole rear side tacked up. So you can see this is actually a two-piece here. Um, just to make it a lot simpler to actually get into shape. Um, so this thing is right around 52 inches long, so that's a pretty big arch uh, standard, than, you know, standard arches. Uh, we also got inside reinforcing, if you can see it right over there. Uh, you got both insides done, both outsides tacked in place. Uh, so now, pretty much, just time to beat it all up, glue it up, and then uh, next step, four link. So guys, we got a little update for you. Got the leaf springs off. Got the rear end all cleaned up, stripped up. Uh, I still gotta do a final DA on it and clean up, uh, but this is gonna give us a rough uh, clean up pretty much. Uh, I better go get those phones. All right, so let's try this again. Phones aren't ringing. The rear end's all cleaned up. We got the leaf springs, leaf spring mounts off, bump stops off. Um, we just did a quick grind on it real quick. Uh, we haven't hit it. We did hit it with the DA real quick, but not. Not a full final like we normally do. Uh, I just want to get everything cleared off of here. So now that that's done, we got the frame sitting right over there. I got a few little beads, maybe about you know, 30, 40 inches worth of beads left on this, on the reinforcing part. So once I get to that, I'll do a cleanup on that. Then I'm gonna actually probably start the four link. Um, I was gonna do the front end, but the front end's super easy. Uh, it's just 
swap the arms, cut the holes, um, bushings, ball joints, that kind of stuff. So I'm probably going to leave that for last, honestly, because that could knock that out in probably about an hour or so. The four link is what I'm worried about. Um, and mostly because originally this car came in for just a four link and basic lockup, uh, you know, sixes, tens, pretty much. Now, since I talked to the customer, the customer came down, visited us from out of state. He wants to go high lockup on a 57. So I jumped, you know, because I mean, that's cool. It's different. I always like different. So now with that being said, and look at this floor. This floor is freaking immaculate. It's, I mean, it's nearly perfect. Um, I know the guys over at CNC in Anaheim, they did all the body work on the bottom side and I really don't want to tap into it. And if I do tap into it, I'm going to tap into it as very little as possible. I mean, shit, it's beautiful. So, I'm going to kind of like plan it out and kind of strategize to figure out how I'm going to get him to lay low, high lockup, very minimal cutting. So, that's kind of the three things that you don't normally mix together and when doing a high lockup four link. Um, but in this case, we got to do it. So, I got to figure out how to do that without, you know, cutting up his whole floor. Uh, to get him to lay low and still get a full stack of coil in there so he can ride nice, high lockup, low lay, and very minimal cutting. That's like the impossibles that we got to make possible. So that's kind of where I'm sitting here going like, hmm, time to figure this out. So that's where I lay now. That's where I stand now. I got my measurements up above me. I'm going to get this rear end probably over here underneath the car right now. Start getting everything squared up. Probably tack the rear end in place so it doesn't move around. And then I'll start building my link bars. I actually got, I still got a little bit of cleanup here I gotta do. I gotta clean up uh, his original mounts. Gotta grind that stuff off. Um, clean that up real quick. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So I got the rear end centered up now. Uh, it took me a minute, but I was able to get the rear end centered up. Got it jacked up. Cleaning angle correct. I actually kind of went up with the pinning angle. I went positive just slightly uh, because what's going to happen is as this car locks up, the pinion's actually going to want to start pointing down because the arms are on top are going to be slightly shorter. So I compensated by kicking it up just a hair because I fully laid. You know, he's not going to have any suspension. It's not going to be a drivable car at this point. But to get him full lockup, as soon as this kicks up about one hit, this pinion's going to kick straight and it's going to be right at drive height. So we'll be perfect at that. So what I normally do, oh man, I almost tripped. <laughs> um, so what I normally do is I just get a piece of scrap and I get the rear end centered up and I just give it a few tacks here. And I do that because normally what happens is, you know, you'll catch yourself kind of you know, leaning on here and stuff like that. So I do that that way that the rear end doesn't move from my measurement that I want it at. So now with everything reinforced and the rear end centered up here, um, I started doing my tubes for my arms and I'm trying to get these arms as long as possible right now these are really long I cut them longer than I normally have to that way I rather have extra than not enough because um, it's always gonna be stronger you know you don't want to have to cut and add a piece or nothing like that so I cut them longer than I need and I cut off the extra you know once I'm done with it so I'm trying to get these arms right now I cut these at 46 inches I believe they're gonna be roughly right around 36 to 37 inches but I gave myself a little bit of clearance or uh, extra room so what I'm aiming for right now is to get this as far outside as possible somewhere right around here and I gave this little notch right here to clear the frame and so it's also normally if I would have left this guy straight it would have put this bar right about here it would be almost nearly impossible to get the inside well closer to the, the drum right there so with it being kicked in, it gives me an extra, you know, three inches to get my welding gun in there and uh, it makes it a lot easier. So now I got those two guys there. I got both of them matching the same. So now I got to work on my mount somewhere either here or here. If I put it here, I'm going to have to put a little kick in the, in the arm just to clear this body mount 
But again, you know, the longer I go, the better it's going to be. The pinion's going to kick less with the longer arms. If your arms are shorter, it's going to give you a, a, more of a pitch on your rear end and on the pinion. This is the pinion when I refer to that right here. Um, you normally want this pinion angle within three degrees, at, you know, driving, and you don't want it to be binding. So, of course, everything we build, we like it functional. We like it to uh, work in all positions, up, laid. You know, fully locked up, fully laid, uh, driving height, you want it to be all uh, working. So that's the fun part is getting all these measurements correct. Um, normally when I start doing these four links like this, I normally don't like to walk away from them because I like to get them all set in place and do it at one time. And well, we got the bottom link bars in. As you can kind of see right there, we had to give a little frame angle. I had to give the bar angle, sorry, to clear the frame. I kind of mixed up both sentences in one right there um, but yeah so you can see down there on this lower bar so this bar we actually kicked it in that way we can actually clear and get a welder in here uh, to weld up the lower link so I got everything in place as far as the lowers uh, we built the brackets right here for the frame and if you see I try to keep it if you see frame height I kept everything frame height just to pretty much get this car to lay. Because the whole idea behind this car was to get it to lay as low as we can, lock up as high as we can, get as much coil as we can, and ride as nice as we can. Which we all know, mixing all those in one is normally pretty hard. So that's our goal here. And of course, I know we went over, look at this floor. This floor is freaking immaculate above me. So there's no way I'm going to try to cut you know, the whole thing out. I'm trying to just cut very minimal. I mean, I, I do have to do uh, two seven inch circles, but other than that, it's not that bad. Um, you know, compared to normally having to cut across this whole thing up here. So yeah, it's uh, not too bad. So right now with the lowers already attacked in place, um, I got the bolts just, you know, ran through them real, um, you know, without no nuts or nothing. Um, and got everything still jack stand, the frame still uh, tacked in place right here so it doesn't move. In the rear end, I mean. And so now what we're doing is I just welded up my upper link mounts. Normally I wouldn't have done this right here. I had to do a little plate. Uh, but the frame had a little bit of rust in this area. So I didn't want to have to... Oh, I was going to show you guys how this goes, but this thing's freaking still hot. Um, this mount was going to go right here. But if I welded that directly to the area that was going to be... Um, you know, where the mount goes and it's, it's rusted... Well, in the end, you know, with all the pressure on it, eventually it's going to just rip that guy right out. So what I did is I just plated it. I just plated this section right here, and I'm going to weld the bracket to that plate. That way it pulls from a greater surface area instead of just pulling from the direct points of the welds. That way it makes it a lot stronger. Um, you know, I don't know if this guy's going to necessarily three-wheel this, but, you know, you never know. So just in case he does, you want to make sure it's strong. You make sure everything's, you know, durable and it's going to last him. Uh, so... Our challenge right now is, I don't know if you guys can really see, I'm gonna kind of put this, this kind of brackets in the way, but I gotta worry about this height coming across. Cause this is the top of the frame. So I can't have my mounts, you know, go much higher than this. If they come up maybe a, you know, eighth inch higher than it, then we're okay. But I gotta try to keep these guys, and these are gonna be the mounts for the triangulated section. So these mounts are gonna come in from here all the way up to here and on both sides. So I gotta try to keep them low, but at the same time, clear the pumpkin and the third member, but at the same time articulate. So you can see there's a lot of trial and error in this. Um, luckily, there has not been any error yet, and it's all just been trial. So we're on a good, you know, good standing right now. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for everything to cool off before I hand grab this. I'm gonna get these on here, get these measured out real quick and uh, start my upper links. My upper links are going to have some bends in it just to clear all this. I got to see this, this slope right here. I can't go any higher than this with my bar. So right now I got tabs mocked up on the uppers. Uh, the uppers are really tricky right now. Uh, it's been a, probably about an hour trying to get this dialed in. So I got them all bent up, got them tacked in. The issue I was having was I don't know if you guys know, a lot of times the pumpkins aren't directly in the center. So visually, it looks off. But after I measured and measured and measured and measured, it was dead on. 
but visually you stare at it and it looks like it's somewhat off and it's, it's tricky especially because the tabs I have to make because the way the pumpkin's rounded here one side sits higher one side sits lower so technically I had to make some tabs actually all four of these tabs were at different heights and we had to do that just to get them the same height coming across here because the shape and the angle of everything you know it was real tricky so we got it now um, I just put it on the ground I still got a correct pinion here it's off a little bit not much maybe a degree or two um, visually I could see it just because I you know as many of these I do but that's just a quick fix just adjusting on the bungs but everything looks good so far and I'm doing it by myself so of course there's only one way to do it for So there you guys go. So as you can tell, the pinion's off a little, but I just gotta adjust that off the lower links. Uh, maybe trim down about a half inch on uh, this upper link right here to get this back down. But for as much movement as this has, that's uh, pretty freaking good. Well, I gotta say, where's our tape measure at around here? I'll tell you guys exactly how much it moved because the frame was touching the rear end. Oh, gotta get a tape measure. I got literally crap everywhere because. As, you, as I was saying, you know, I, I did the tabs, each one was different. So I did each one in increments of, of a quarter inch, and I did about eight different versions of them, so they're all laying down there. So, let me get this tape measure out here. So the, the frame, the bottom, the top side of the rear end was touching the bottom side of the frame here. So right here, if you go directly on it, you go directly on top of the rear end, and we're about, we'll call that 29 and a quarter at the lowest point where it's going to hit. So that, you're talking about 29 inches of movement. That's pretty damn good if you ask me. The only thing I do, you know, I'm not too happy with is the pinion angle, but I'm going to adjust that right now. So I'm pretty excited about that. So good. take those off, trim it down, retack, retest, and back at this. This is going to be... Well, this is actually technically my first attempt at moving it and lifting it. So I'm as much movement as this has and, and this pinion angle, that's actually pretty good. I just got to do a little fine tweaking real quick. This is where we stand so far right now, uh, mocking the bridge up. Just got it tacked in place right here. That way if I have to make any changes or movements on it, because right now I'm actually mocking this below the frame. As you can see, this is below the frame right here. Um, in hopes that it's gonna fit right in that channel right there. So if everything looks good here, which it does so far, um, I'm gonna actually mount the frame back onto the body to make sure you know, we don't have to trim too much. You know, again, this is all trial and error. So, we're, you know, we're pretty much trying all this to, you know, try to get the best of all the worlds right here. So, this bridge is still going to get reinforced if it does work. Um, right now, we're just using it as a flat plate just to get the, the basic measurements of it. Uh, and then we're going to come in and gusset it, you know, from here all the way across. And we do this just to gain clearance of the Himes going through there and everything else. Uh, we went ahead and did the pockets for the coil. Um, we're running a one ton coil back here because I believe he's only gonna be running about four batteries in this car. Uh, we added some reinforcing on the main pocket that way it doesn't push through and protrude through. Um, but as you can see right now, I'm just kind of jumping on it right here. You know, it's just tacked together so I don't wanna push too hard, but as you can see right there, we're only going to be cutting, well, as of right now, the plans, we're only going to be cutting the circles for these to go through the trunk. Um, this is kind of an older, old school style, what's called, uh, we all, we've always called it the smokestacks. Um, that way, instead of cutting the whole sheet metal out, our goal is to just only cut circles out, which these would be seven inch circles. Uh, that way it's a lot cleaner look, and you just have the pipes coming through. 
And um, that's pretty much where we stand so far. Again, everything's just in the tack mode right now, uh, minus the pipes. We did fully weld those up. Um, but everything else is still movable. Power balls are still movable. All that stuff's still movable. Same thing with the tabs, the four link brackets, and we're just doing mocking. Pretty much we're gonna mock, test, mock, test, mock, test, and repeat. And we do that a whole bunch of times to make sure everything clears. There's no issues on movement, binding. Um, I did go ahead and oblong these holes here because 22 inch telescopics always have some type of movement. So I made them at a two and a quarter wide by 2.75, um, you know, front to back. So it kind of has some movement on here. That way, as the cylinder moves in, in uh, with the car going up, it doesn't have any issues with it bending. So guys, I'm not gonna give you the most flattering view of myself, but we got the holes mar marked out where the smokestacks are gonna be running through. Uh, we got two, one on each side, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. And we got both holes, you know, roughly marked out. I got a Sharpie and I just, went around it so the sharpie is going to give me an extra eighth inch to you know quarter inch on each side of clearance uh, which works out great for what we're doing here um, just because the thickness of the pin you know the felt of the pin is, is dead center but the thickness of the pin is about a sixteenth inch on each side extra so I ran that sharpie all the way across it in a circle um, as you can see you know I had multiple different lines um, but the outside one is going to be the one I'm going to be chasing um, you know, if you look at it from down here, it looks a pretty good circle. If you look at it from here, it looks completely weird. So that's my view on it. Um, it's just because the angles of the sheet metal and everything. So I started with just a little pilot hole right here, and I'm just gonna start and ease my way in with the air saw. Um, I'm just using a Mako air saw. We have touched down, finally. So after about two hours, each hole took me about an hour or so to cut, because uh, look how thick these guys are. We hit a point where it's actually triple thick and triple sheet metal on these guys. So uh, finally got them cut. That's what we call smokestacks right there. So we're moving right along on this guy. We got the bridge welded up. That's a 37 inch bead. Single pass. And we got the mounts all welded up here. Just gotta come in and clean everything up. Just wire wheel it. There's not much uh, finish work needed besides just wire wheeling. To clean off some of the little extra glass and slag. So they got the backside welded up. These are gonna be the re these are actually the reinforcing pieces to keep this bridge from bowing. And the reason for the cutout in the center is actually to clear the heim joints right there. So the top of the pockets, ugh, get those off. Top top of the pockets have been reinforced as well. Uh, double layered bottom is uh, quarter inch top is three sixteenths so now with the bridge all welded up brackets pretty much all welded up I gotta do some inside welds down in here um, but I'm gonna wait till I lift the frame up um, I gotta actually pull the rear end off the links off I gotta TIG weld all the, the links in there um, all the bungs into the links, I should say. Sorry, right here. And then uh, weld up the rear end mounts, power ball mounts. So we still got about a good two hours worth of welding left on this guy, but it's looking good. We just test fitted and it fits sexy. It was so freaking perfect. Couldn't have asked for better, honestly. I mean, I was a little nervous cutting these holes because if you look, look how many layers of sheet metal right there. And right there, when I'm cutting it, it doesn't look right, but if you look dead up, it's pretty good. Um, I start to clean those up just real real lightly with some uh, sandpaper. Uh, but other than that, it's, you know, working, working good, looking good. So this is the way it sits right now. I have it up on jack stands, that's why it was a little easier for me to weld, but it's looking good, guys. Definitely looking good. Making progress on it, so. So as we are trying to get this done, I got reinforcements. Dick finally showed up, and I'm thankful. Because man, I was uh, definitely stressing trying to get this guy done. But the good part is, everything has been welded back here. Everything. All right, I had to cut off the video because my pizza guy was calling. 
and pizza's here because I haven't had lunch yet. It's like seven o'clock. Haven't took a break. Thank God Vic is here helping me. Um, we're getting this all back together. We already test fitted. It looked great. Um, I just finished TIG welding the, the lower links, the upper links, gusseting the, the upper links as well. Uh, just the tabs. So now I gotta wait for the lower arms to cool down real quick. Uh, Slap the cylinders in there. Vic's tearing down the front. And we're gonna do the arms real quick. So it's gonna be looking good. Pizza guy is pulling around the corner, so I'm gonna grab my pizza. All right, sorry guys, this video's coming to a little intermission. Had to take a break. So guys, she's finally back together. I know we kind of missed a little bit in there because we got so busy, we ran into a few issues with this. Um, so we were doing the front arms, and I'll, I'll take you up there real quick. So we are doing the front arms, we had to swap out the stock arms, go into a set of custom arms that I believe they purchased from West Coast Metalworks. Um, so those are them right there. They had, he had a set of uppers and lowers, but they didn't have the bars on it. So we had to take the stock bars off and uh, you know, take all the bushings, ball joints off and stuff like that and, and convert it over to the new stuff. Well, the first one went great. Second one went great. Third one went great. And I'm like, we're gonna knock this out of the park. Vic's out here helping me. We're, we're freaking rolling. You know, he helped last night. And you know what? I was like, dude, this is going too easy. Sure enough, the last one, the last bolt, was seized into the uh, into the cross shaft bar, and uh, well, tried every trick in the book, torched it, heated it up, um, torched it, heated it up, stuck it in the freezer to try to shrink it. Um, I drilled it, put a easy out in it, broke my easy out, drilled the old easy out out, put a new easy out in, tried to easy out that one, broke that one. So after about an hour of just dicking around with this, I was like, you know what? We call the customer, see, we're just gonna have to get some new shafts out here. So I called uh, our local parts store, five to seven days. This car was supposed to be done tonight. That's not gonna happen. So luckily, uh, car and truck shop in Orange had them. Uh, shot down there, picked them up. Vic was back here putting the rest of the arms back on. So that's kind of where I left off on the videos. I kind of didn't, I kind of skipped over those parts, but it's together. And it's still daylight outside, as you guys can see. So that's good for us. That means we're, you know, we're on time, we're on schedule. So here's a set of front arms. And the nice part about the lower arms that uh, West Coast Metalworks did, uh, they're pocketed. So we're actually running a full or a, a set of pre-cuts in there and a pair of eights. And this guy, once he's on 13, it's gonna lay. I mean, it's gonna lay, lay. And you can see the car is sitting pretty level right now. Um, of course, that's with no weight in there. So sitting a lot higher with, you know, no, without the weight in there. Um, Got the back all hosed up. My screen looks a little dirty. Hold on. There we go. It's cleaner. All right. So, yeah, it's sitting pretty even right now. Uh, again, we're running 22-inch telescopics in the back. You guys saw the custom bridge we did. We saw the custom four link we did. Uh, on the front arms, we really didn't do much with that. That was West Coast Metalworks that supplied those. Um, but we did install them. Uh, had to clean up the bushing holes and stuff like that. Drill out the, you know, the, these holes to get them to all fit. But other than that, it was real simple. Um, all the new bushings, ball joints, got them installed. That was the easy part. You know, I really wasn't worried about that. Uh, none of the guys are really worried about that either. So. It's together. Now let's test it. All right, guys, so we're going to test it, see how it works. I just got our test pump on here. Uh, what we have later on. 